Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, we'll be discussing about the design of one-way slab. Uh, this will be a theoretical part, and the other part will uh, other video will be a numerical one. So let's start with the one-way slab. So starting with the design steps. The very first step is to calculate the effective depth of this slab. That is D. Small d we can write and capital D will be the total depth and L by D will be calculating through the ratio of length to depth and we'll take this value as 25 or 30 depending upon the type of slab for simply supported it is taken as 25 and for the continuous slab it is taken as 30 and the length is taken for the shorter side as I already discussed in the introduction part of the slab as the for the shorter side because the bending occurs along the shorter direction. Now, the second step is to calculate the effective length okay, of the slab. The length in this step one is the total length or clear span. And this is taken from this clause 22.2 page 34 of IS 456-2000. And the effective length is calculated uh, uh, considering the shorter side and longer side. Third step is to calculate the total load acting on the slab, collection of all loads. Uh, third, fourth step is to calculate the maximum bending moment considering the load and, and the shear force acting on the slab. Fifth step is to calculate the depth against the bending moment, whether the depth calculated is safe for the bending moment acting on the slab. So that is M max is equal to, we know for the beam, okay, 0 0.36 FCK B into XU that is limiting, uh, sorry, neutral axis depth d minus 0.42 xu which is taken as 0.136 fck bd square for the steel grade of fe 415 for 500 it will be 0.133 so something like that the sixth step is to calculate the area of steel required okay as per the uh, annex g 1.1b page 96 of IS 456 you can find that on IS 456 similarly seventh step is to calculate or check for the shear force using the clause 40 don't worry we'll discuss the numerical also but this is a general theoretical part for the designing step uh, the eighth step is to check for deflection criteria Okay, whether the depth and the length ratio is sufficient to satisfy the deflection criteria and this is also from page 37 of IS 456 IX that is ninth step is to check for the development length which is necessary for developing the bond between the uh, between the bars okay this is from clause 26.2.1 page 42 and clause 26.2.3.3c page 44 and similarly providing in the 10th step the distribution bar because we have to provide um, bars in both directions the main bar will be responsible or okay, I'll discuss that and 11th step reinforcement detailing that is the size and drawings of the reinforcement so the step 1 step 3 and step 4 are similar to that of the beam okay that we have done in previous videos from the fifth step it is different and make sure that D is the effective depth and then we have to calculate the area of steel AST check for shear force, check for deflection, de development length, provide distribution bar make sure the distribution bar is provided for the prevention of the formation of cracks due to the temperature variation okay the distribution bar are provided along the longer side and the main reinforcement are provided along the shorter side because the shorter side goes for the deflection make sure this point you understand so this is a section of uh, uh, 
slab okay but we will consider okay lx and ly lx is the shorter side so you have to provide main bar along the shorter side okay thank you now we will discuss the numerical in the second video